I'm assuming that these big ballasts are for these lights here for the power compacts. Yes. So Scott is uh, beginning to disassemble the lighting system off the canopy so we can ultimately remove the canopy. Uh, the corals and most everything I think is alive is out of the tank. Still think there's a shrimp that's missing. I look too. I see him. I move some rocks. Uh, maybe he went with the live rock out inside. Uh, those being the corals, I have to acclimate them. And they are going out here. Uh, the fish, some of them are being acclimated to this tank that's been running for about a week with live rock and grunge pad. Other fish. We're going to go into the fish holding system that's been running for about a week, grunge pads and such. And the corals will go in here, but I need to come up with a uh, light temporarily, and I'm thinking that metal halide back there may work, so should have been better prepared. Anyhow, that's where we're at. So with the fish being slowly acclimated to their new temporary homes, we've now started to disassemble the old tank's lighting and filter system. So Scott's getting the old lighting system pulled off and we're packing it away neatly. Uh, be sure to check out the aquarium design website, in particular the used equipment page. Some of this stuff may end up on there and some of you local people might be interested in it. But we'll get that... Uh, cleaned up and put away and I think uh, we're close to being able to actually lift the canopy off and then getting the rest of the water out and then uh, attacking the filter system. As certain components such as the JBO pumps come off the tank it gives us the opportunity to uh, clean them. And here we're cleaning them off in vinegar to get rid of some of the calcareous algae that's grown in there. Um, it also gives us a chance to get rid of the the schmutz and the algae that's gotten caught up in there, so we'll let those soak for a little while. The canopy is gone with all the old lighting. We're ready to take out the old sand. We're deciding whether we're going to use it in the new tank or not. Um, and Scott is removing the old filter system, which is an old wet dry trickle filter minus the bio balls, but it's been filled with pieces of live rock that had a whole bunch of sponge growth on it probably have more so for Steve Tyree we'll call it a, a cryptic zone. So, is that coming out? There we go. That's a good 12 years collection of salt crust that's holding that filter in place. It might be a good idea to occasionally use a vacuum to clean that area out. Oh look at that at least on a yearly basis. I mean, you're... Mm. Little brittle star? Yeah, you're... Huh. Drip tray. Son of a gun, been living on the drip tray for who knows how long. Huh. Nibble at my hand. Go into the tank. So here's the metal halide that we set up on top of a, a trash can that has casters on it, and that's currently holding sea fans, and I think there's rose anemones down there. And then I got corals over here, but um, I'm not, no, I don't know if I'm going to put them into the tank tonight when it gets up and running, or if I'm going to acclimate them to here, but I haven't got that far along. Uh, these fish are acclimating here to this tank, and those fish there should be acclimating to the fish system. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hog and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients, 
and that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. Hi there, my name is Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. Anything interesting on that rock? Not really. Oh. Some sponge. Oh. There is sponge growth there. Not an awful lot. Worthy of putting back into the new tank? Worthy of putting in the new sump. I don't see why not. Okay. I mean, if we have room in the new sump. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah, there's some sponge in this stuff. Oh, cool. So you can see that rock that he took out of the sump all the sponge growth that's on there that's beneficial filtration wise so what I'm gonna do is got some towels that are wet and drape over the top of that just to keep it moist and try to keep it alive and save it we've now come to the point where the sand at the bottom of a tank needs to be removed. There's basically two ways to do so. One is to use a siphon and vacuum or suck it out with the old water. But if you look close, I don't think we've got enough water left in the tank. So the other choice is to scoop it out by hand, one scoop at a time. Now it's my intent to take this sand and place it into the new reef tank. Maybe I'm being a little bit cheap, but I see value in that sand as it's already got an abundance of life in it. Unfortunately, it's also got an abundance of 12 years worth of debris. Vacuuming first? No. Hey, siphon first before you scoop that stuff out. Why? So you don't put all this schmutz into your brand new tank. Come on. Well, it appears as though I've been outruled by my helpers, and so we're not putting the old sand back into the system. I'm forced into uh, buying some new sand. The idea being that it's a new system, why start off with old problems? So it's been decided that we will not add the old dirty sand back to the new tank. And Scott has volunteered to try to get a siphon started. so that I can get the remaining amount of sand. It's too low to quickly out of the tank. And quickly being the operative word, we get the tank drain and remove. All right, so the tank is lifted off the stand. And we've got that outside here. On the lawn, we can rinse that off. And Condi is oh. no more salt water. Oh. Condi is doing some magic on his uh, design. Missed that one. And 
and with a little bit more warning this time, I help Scott lift and move the old oak stand out of the house. All right, so the uh, cabinet is out of there. The wall needs to be cleaned off a little bit. There is some water damage on the drywall and ultimately the fix there would be to cut six to 12 inches off and uh, replace it, but uh, we don't have the luxury of doing that. So I'll get the wall clean, try to make that as nice as possible and get the carpet cleaned up here. Uh, we'll get the filter out of the way and get going. Make it a point to come on back for the next two parts as we build my new 180 gallon glass coral reef tank.